Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Reactors League podcast. I am, of course, your lead admin, Chainsaw Reacts, and with me today as my special guest is the one, the only, Mark Wayne. What is up? Hello, what is up? (laughs) I was asking him, like, dude, I gotta get you on a podcast. He's like, okay, I'm like, we're gonna talk all spoilers, but before we get to spoilers, we want to jump into the first thing, which is the Justice League photo that was just released a few days ago. And wow, <laughs> what a <laughs> shock. Um, I'm gonna drop it. What was your uh, first impressions when you saw the photo? Uh, the first thing I noticed was uh, Batman's costume. Yeah, it was a little bit different than the ones we've seen so far. It looks kind of like the costume in the Arkham games. Yeah, and the way the goggles kind of go up above his eyes. When I'm, he's curious to see, I'm curious to see how they're going to utilize the goggles in the movie. Do you think it's going to be like a um, in the dark scenario, kind of like, um, what, what is it called? Uh, like x ray vision, maybe? Or a lot of people said like vision? they're going to reflect a certain way to make it look like he has white eyes, I think, but I'm not exactly sure. I think that'll look cool, though. Yeah, but every, obviously everyone's comparing him to Owl Man from Watchmen, which. Understandable, Snyder directed both, but oh, yeah. I can see why. I think the thing that really like drew me into the photo was the fact that they put Cyborg Center in the photo. Yeah, I wonder why they did that. I think because realistically, because we're DC fans, so we yeah. know the character, but to the wild, wide gen- uh, general audience that's going to go to see this film, they are probably less known. Like they 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 know him less. So, oh, yeah. To put him front and center, and we can. I I, I think we're gonna learn more about him in this film. Cyborg. Yeah, than the others. Him him and Aquaman, I think, are gonna be the main two that they're gonna push the most. Oh yeah, because I I mean, Aquaman's. You know, he. he, You know, they really gotta make it to where he's a badass. Because they have have to sell people on him so that people can go see his movie. Exactly, because I mean, by the time Justice League comes out, we've already seen. Batman, we've already seen Flash and Suicide Squad. And exactly. a lot of people know, even though it's a different Flash from the Flash TV show, they kind of get the idea. And they know Wonder Woman already. And then her movie's going to already have been out. Yeah, so it makes logical sense that Cyborg and Aquaman be front and center of so this film. Their movies, yeah. I think Cyborg needs to be the most of because, I mean, people know the Aquaman story. He's a guy who lives in water. He talks to fish. It's the joke, but I think that with with Jason Momoa's portrayal of what we're hoping to see, I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. Like, yeah, Aquaman's a badass. I wonder, Cyborg kind of looks like he's farther back. And I wonder, because his legs at the very bottom look pretty skinny. Like, I'm looking at the picture right now. Yeah. So I wonder if that's just, like, his knees and he's taller than it appears. So do you think he's going to be taller than everybody else? I, like, in the picture, he looks shorter than everyone else. But at the same time, he kind of looks like he's standing behind them. He might, come, be, he might come out last in that. That's true. So it could um, just be like perspective kind of thing. What I think is interesting as well is that Batman is the most lit in the photo. Oh, yeah. In terms of lighting, but Aquaman is the most dark. Like, we've already seen his costume before because of, like, the photo that Zack Snyder tweeted out of Jason Momoa with a guitar in his hand. Oh, yeah. costume. Oh, and, dope. But yet, they, they're keeping it kind of dark. I wonder why. I wonder why that is because everyone else's costume is pretty well lit, but he's just. Maybe this is a more updated suit that he's going to have later in the film. They haven't revealed yet. Maybe it looks really cool. Yeah, I mean, he has his trident, which is really cool. <laughs> About the Flash is the way his costume is. Like, I'm curious to know what all those lines and strings are supposed to be. Maybe it's like a like holding it together. Maybe it could. It looked. Because they kind of look like, yeah, like the suit kind of looks like it's a bunch of pieces that's on him, and it doesn't. None of them look connected. I think that uh, I think it's been stated that he his suit that he's been building is him taking parts from other things and putting it together for a suit. Well, that that would make sense. But I think I, I think they've already confirmed that we'll see another suit in the film. They're probably not going to reveal it in any trailers, but I think Bruce Wayne is going to make him a suit, uh, which Hopefully makes sense. His neck kind of looks. <laughs> Elongate it. I don't know if that's yeah, a li- yeah, a little bit. But uh, everyone else looks normal, except for him. He, it looks like he's like a giraffe or something. Yeah, like it looks like it'd be hard for him to turn his neck. I guess we just gotta wait and see. 
how it plays out. I can kind of see what you're meaning about the whole um, Cyborg in the back, though, because he looks like he's – like the four are standing in a line, and Cyborg's kind of behind them. Yeah, and his suit is also all CG, so maybe that and has also, something to do with it. And, and he is connected to these parademons and Stefanolf because, I mean, he is – essentially, he's a mother box that so, kind of morphed into him. Yeah, so I feel like the movie is probably going to be – like they get Flash on board pretty quick, as we can see in the trailer. And it's probably just going to be Flash, Wonder Woman, and Batman. And they're going to probably tell, like we said, Cyborg and Aquaman's stories, like, the most. And then out of everyone else's stories, I think their stories are going to be the most um, fleshed out. Definitely agree with that because, I mean, they have to sell them the most. Uh, And you have to have a focal point. I think it makes sense that the less known character of the Justice League you put in the forefront. And he's connected because, I mean, it's all revolving around mother boxes, and that's his whole backstory, essentially. Is that's, that's how he was created. Um, exactly. I wonder how long it will take for Superman to appear in the movie. I've and been, hearing, conflict, I've been hearing conflicting reports. Either he's going to be appearing halfway through or literally the last, the third act. Because so, I know a lot of people didn't like that they uh, showed Doomsday in the trailer. So I'm wondering if they're going to show Superman at all in any trailers or if they're just going to wait until the movie actually comes out. I wouldn't be surprised if they show him, but I think what they're going to hide, they're probably going to hide the black suit. They're probably oh, yeah. going to show that. I movie. completely forgot about that picture coming out. Yeah, that, that was a good teaser too. Like, what? Really? I completely good. forgot about that. Yeah. You're doing the black suit. What? That was going to be so dope. I wonder if he's going to have like a beard and long hair or if they're just going to just do the suit. Now, I think that's going to be hidden from the from the trailers, but I guarantee you they're probably going to show a shot of him in his regular suit, clean-shaven, like a final shot of the final trailer, like a month before the film comes out or something. That would be cool. How, I was about to say, um, weren't they going to release a trailer in December, or am I wrong for the Justice League? It was rumored, and obviously everyone wanted it for a Christmas present, and it never happened. I think that from what I've been hearing is that the trailer is ready and they're ready to start marketing it, but they don't want to do it too early. And the fact that Wonder Woman still has to come out first, but I guarantee you when Wonder Woman comes out, we will have another full trailer in front of that film for sure. You think they'll wait until Wonder Woman is about to come out to release another one? Or you think they'll release it soon enough? I don't know. Because look at what Marvel's doing. Marvel put out a Spider-Man Homecoming trailer and a Guardians of the Galaxy 2 trailer, and Guardians of the Galaxy comes out first, but yet they put out the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer anyways. Like, they don't care. They're just putting out trailers. So I can definitely see them putting out a trailer before Wonder Woman for Justice League and then putting out another trailer in front of Wonder Woman. That would make sense. I hope they don't reveal too much in the trailers, though. I hope they learned from their BVS mistakes. Because they put a lot in those BVS trailers. Yeah, and I think if Doomsday was held off, I think it would have been received better. Oh, yeah. It would have been a big surprise, but... <sighs> I still, I'm still curious to know why they did that. They were put in the trailer. Because the fact that a lot of people were complaining, like general audiences were complaining, why is Batman and Superman fighting? I don't understand. So they had to show... Well, a what show. happened? Yeah, a shot of what's going to happen eventually. It's just, really? I mean, I enjoyed all the trailers, but out of all of them, that one was probably my least favorite. Like, the entire time I was watching it, it was just, I was just curious to know why they were putting so much in there. And, like, the final shot of the Trinity, which was a cool shot, but they put that in there. And I just don't get why they put that much in the trailer. Some people were speculating that, like, that shot of the Trinity is, like, in the middle of the film and that... Oh, watch it to be where they're actually going to fight again in the film, like where they team up because of a bigger threat, but then they fight again. And like, that's just too much. I know I saw an article um, and a lot of people were um, even in the group. They're like, I don't want to see Batman and Superman fight again, but I'm pretty sure like they're fighting over who's going to be the leader. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like a comedic type of thing. And a lot of people think they're going to fight for real. I think it's going to be an argument. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's not going to be a serious argument. I think it's going to be funny. I'm yeah. not sure. I feel like you go either way. Yeah, I yeah the article yeah I know yeah the article like well Batman and Superman might might rematch for who's going to run the Justice League and it's just like so much clickbait. 
it's not yeah it's not gonna be it's not gonna be that it's just gonna be them either playfully arguing or you know it's supposed to be funny or an actual argument and and all the other justice is gonna be there to to witness this argument go down and it might be a tense moment but I don't see them fighting again what exactly do you think the ship is that they're on because I think I see the Batmobile on it uh, I think they call it the, the the flying fox or something like that it's a humongous vehicle that Bruce Wayne has created for the Justice League to kind of move like for them to go from one place to another because not all of them can fly because I mean oh, in this in this uh, thing flash can run fast cyborg he can he can't fly I mean he, wait, wait wait he might be able to fly I don't know fly in this universe because I don't think we've seen her fly but they said that she can't okay but that but they could change that she could learn how to but uh apparently she can just jump really far that's interesting. I wonder if Aquaman could jump really far in this universe. I bet he can. I mean, you know, he, he, he has to have super strength. I mean, you saw how he threw uh, Bruce Wayne against, against that wall, like, no problem. Oh, yeah. What are you, who are you most excited to see in the um, Justice League movie? Like, what characters or what character are you most excited to see? I, I, I'm really interested in Barry Allen, the Flash, in this one because I'm so used to Grant Gustin's Flash on the show. So oh, yeah. I, I want to see him develop more, and <clears throat> I want to see obviously the continuation of Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Do you think it will be confusing for like general audience to have two different flashes? Do I don't think, think people will think it's connected. I think they're going to show the differences, but what I think what they'll do is for the Flash movie, they might have a small cameo of Grant Gustin's Flash where he interacts with a Barry Allen from another Earth, and they'll have that in the movie, and they'll somehow tie that into the show. Kind of show it's the multiverse. That would be really cool if they did that. Yeah, because there was like an article that came out a couple of days ago. David Ramsey, who plays Diggle, he was like, "I want to see, I want to see Ben Affleck's Batman on an arrow." I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> like, I could see the two flashes meeting because they both are speedsters. They time travel. They go to. I want to see them parts. race, but like not see who wins. That would be really cool. Like, I, I just can't see Ben Affleck's Batman on an arrow. I mean, trust me, I would die if they did that, but I, it will never happen. Yeah, I don't think it would happen. I'm mostly excited for Aquaman, and I'm also excited for Cyborg, but I'm, my thing is, I wonder if they're going to make him super brooding, because he seems like a very depressed, like, kind of, everything we've seen him in, we haven't seen much of him, but he just seems very stoic. The Aquaman? No, the um, oh, the Cyborg. Cyborg, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's he might be a jokester. You never know. I mean, from the trailer, he's kind of brooding. He's like, "Think you're real?" Like he's like really. In all the pictures, he just kind of looks really sad. I mean, I I would be sad too if my body got. (laughs) Yeah, I I can see now in this film if he is a brooding character where he's really pissed because until the end where he probably. Yeah, and I can definitely see in his solo film in, in Justice League Two that he'll probably lighten up and be the cyborg we know from other forms like comics and animation i think he'll be the more comedic route like flash it makes sense that would be dope i i know a lot of people were um, wondering if they'll ever do flashpoint all i know is that i will die to see jason momoa and gal is it godot or godot see them battle it's gal godot i think i never know what to (laughs) know it's something i would love to see them fight but i don't know if they're going to do flashpoint Oh well, if they do, they got Jeffrey Dean Morgan Negan as Thomas Wayne. That's a good I think, pick. I think it would be the thing that also interests me is how the, the Cyborg, the Flash, and the Aquaman solo films are going to go because um, they all they are all in Batman vs Superman. They have small cameos. They're going to be in Justice League, but and all this is before their solo films. So that's another yeah. assumption that people went to go see Justice League first. Yeah, DC's going the opposite direction of Marvel <clears throat> in terms of how they set up their film, you know? Yeah, because I don't think they're going to be origin stories. And at the same time, where they just throw people straight into a different kind of story that's not an origin. I don't know how they're going to do that. That seems kind They of... might do like a flashback sequences where they kind of explain the origin. But no. I, I don't know, because it, it all depends on how this movie sets up the other characters. Because... If they just go, okay, here's Cyborg. We're not going to give you a new backstory. This is Cyborg. That's it. Uh, then I think in the solo film, they'll have to do some type of origin where we see him before he becomes Cyborg. And with Aquaman, I guess we'll see him before he finds out that he's 
half Atlantean, you know? That's going to be dope. My one final question before we move on is, I wonder, is Wonder Woman going to get a suit upgrade at some point? I'm hoping. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of her costume. I mean, it looks all right, but... Yeah. I think a suit upgrade would be... Because I think... I wonder if they're going to upgrade Superman as well. He's going to have a black one, but I wonder if they're going to upgrade his regular one at all. I think we'll probably see that in the Man of Steel sequel, whenever we get that. Oh, yeah. Because I know Batman's... Just, I'm looking at his right now, and it just looks, looks amazing. I mean, even though it's the typical thing you could say, I, I, I kind of see Bruce Wayne kind of helping out with costumes. Sense. That makes sense. Kind of like the Tony Stark. Yeah, even though it's yeah. the comparisons there in the Cisco uh, television, but I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. it makes sense. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this film. I, I like the photo a lot. I do too. For sure. Okay, so let's move on to spoiler talk. First, we're going to start off with Supergirl Season 2. If you have not seen Season 2 of Supergirl or any of the rest of the shows we'll be talking about, spoiler alert, you have been warned. You better be caught up. All right, so, so I'm, I'm going to forewarn you that for Legends and Supergirl, I'm not all the way caught up, but I know of most of the things that happen. But uh, I kind of stopped reacting to them. Well, it's understandable. But, I mean, yeah. especially for Legends, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, for So for Supergirl, for what you've seen, are you enjoying the season so far in terms of the story, and are you liking it more than season one? Or, Well, it's hard to say because, well, in season two, I definitely like it a tad bit more, but at the same time, to me, it didn't ever, from what I did see of season two, it doesn't really seem like Kara is the main character of the show. They're focusing mo- mostly on Alex, and I get because she started to have a, a like a, a lesbian storyline that she had, so I get that, but she didn't seem like the main character at all. And that was one of my main problems when I was watching Supergirl. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from because, I mean, they expanded more in season two. They brought in Superman, obviously, at the beginning. Um, Alex is going to more story. Um, got, again, as well. Yeah, Miss yeah, Miss Martian. Um, and mon as well. Uh, and oh, yeah. I, I can kind of see where you're coming from because, I mean, they're giving a lot more screen time to other stories that have Supergirl involved, but it's not her core story. Exactly. Uh, and I think the reason why they're doing that is because in Supergirl season one, even though it had a huge audience on CBS, the issue was, is that CBS didn't know what to do with that show. They were just kind of just had it. Yeah. Just, just winging it and just going, okay, we'll just do this. And, you know, we'll do this in the comics. So get keep people happy, but they're not really, they really didn't develop a lot of the other characters outside of Kara and like two others, you know? So I feel like with, CW, they're trying to course correct. They're trying to give more development of other characters, but it's kind of taking away from Kara. What do you? What's, what's your opinion on the making uh, Jimmy uh, the Guardian? Oh, um, at first I thought it was ridiculous because um, it's Jimmy Olsen. Okay, exactly. He's not supposed <laughs> to become a hero. With what they've kind of shown and what direction they're going with him so far in season two, um, I'm more accepting it, but I still in the back of my head go, okay, this is cool and all, but he's not Guardian. My thing is I feel like they they have Jimmy Olsen and they don't exactly know what to do with that character outside of his relationship with Kara, in which they're not dating. So it's like they don't exactly know what to do with him. That's why they – then they make him the head of uh, – Catco, right? Yeah, because uh, because Cat left. Catco. Yeah, because they don't they don't exactly know what to do with him. And from what I did see of him as Guardian, it seemed like he, he was just like a Batman kind of character. He wasn't really brooding in that sense, but he did most of his stuff at night. So yeah, I kind of see that because I mean, he's not a yeah. he's not a day person. And it's cool, but I don't really see how vigilante really fits into a show with Supergirl in it. Well, you got you got to apparently you got to keep up with all the other DC shows that have vigilantes, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I'm I, I'm I'm willing to see where it's going to go, but I just don't understand the point because I mean the whole point of season one was Kara was trying to get with Jimmy, and then mm-hmm. the very first thing they do is get is get rid of the relationship at the beginning of season two, and I feel like they did that because CW is like, okay, we don't like this decision. Because you wasted a whole season on it, uh, so let's just end it now. I wonder why they did that. Do you react to Supergirl still or no? 
Well, yeah, I react to it. Yeah, I, I still enjoy it. I think there are still great moments of the show, and I do enjoy it as a whole. Um, I, I personally think it's a lot better than season one. I feel like that they've really found a good direction for it because I think season one just didn't have a really good direction. They were just kind of doing stuff from the comics that super it's Superman related. It's Superman story. So we're going to change it just enough for Supergirl, but it's going to be kind of the same. So you get the nostalgia of the story, but I feel like a season two, they've kind of found their own way with Cadmus and Lana Luther, Lex Luthor's sister, which I think is a pretty cool uh, arc for Kara to kind of get invested with a Luther that isn't evil. So that makes sense. One of my main things with Supergirl, is, uh, like with season one, which I didn't really, I watched it, but I didn't react, like I stopped reacting to it, is because it wasn't, they weren't, it wasn't known that they were in the, if whether or not they're in the Arrowverse. Like they never really said yes or no. They just kind of straight away from it. Yeah. So kind of, I mean, you have all these connected shows and you have all these crossovers. So I'm invested in the, the universe and Supergirl wasn't exactly in the universe. So it kind of made me less, um, willing to watch it and then season two we learn that they are in the universe but now they're on earth 38 so when you're watching the flash and arrow which you assume is on earth one prime earth for um, example and then yeah. Supergirl's on earth 38 it's like where's the relevance <laughs> to the the prime earth to watch a show about earth 38 i think it's 38 i could be wrong yeah it's 38 I, mean, uh, I don't really see why they didn't put her in their earth i'm not seeing does they, they ever say why that she's not in their earth? Like, is there a reason? Well, they never said it, but I think the main reason why is because CBS picked it up and not CW. Because mm. I think CW was pitched the show and they declined it at the time. So CBS picked it up. And it makes sense because the way they kind of set up the mythology of that earth, that aliens are known on that earth. Mm. And Superman's been around. For a and, while. Yeah, and so you can't just put that into Arrowverse because – Cisco, Oliver, Barry, they would have said something about Superman at some point. Oh, that makes sense. So it makes it makes sense that they put on a different Earth, but I think the relevance is the fact that the crossover event that happened. Because oh, yeah. now they now that she's officially she in the universe, you know. Now she can hop back and forth whenever. Yeah, which I think is a really cool device. Um but I'm curious to see what they're going to do with her later. I know that there's another crossover with Flash in terms of a musical thing, <laughs> but... What, when exactly is that happening? Do you know? I, I don't know exactly. I don't think they gave a specific date for it. I don't, think, I don't think they've even shot it yet. Like, with Supergirl, I don't know, there's not... Like, I like the show. Whenever I watch it, I enjoy it. There's not any character that I like, I, that I like that much. Like, with all the other shows, I have a character that I really like. And that's mainly why I watch it for that character. And I haven't found that character with a Supergirl yet. I thought it would be Jimmy, but I don't really care that much for Jimmy as I thought I would. Yeah, yeah. For me, I I was really drawn to Kara in season one when she was first learning how to become Supergirl. And I think for me now in season two, I think I've kind of been drawn more to Martian Manhunter. Oh yeah, because. His arc, and especially with uh, Miss Martian and all that, um, they've been really good. And I'm assuming you saw the episodes of Superman, right? So Superman? Yeah. Yeah, I saw those. What, how did you feel about his portrayal? Uh, I liked what I liked what Tyler Hecklin did for Superman. Um, my only thing is, for I don't know if it has to do with how tall he is or um, how big he, or lack thereof he was, but I didn't really feel the presence of Superman. Like, he, he had the personality down, but Superman is such a um, God-level-like character, and he's, like, the most popular superhero, I think, after Batman. And he didn't really feel like he had the Superman presence when he appeared. He just kind of seemed like a regular guy, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, I mean, I liked it, but... He, the presence of Superman just didn't feel like it was there. Like it, it didn't. Make sense, but... Oh, it's the sa it's a savior of the planet. It's just a superhero. yeah. It just felt yeah. It just felt like a superhero that was just in town. I think the the only real the only real thing they really did to kind of showcase that he is Superman is when he showed up at the DEO and kind of. Oh yeah, that was dope. Yeah, I think that, holy shit! Like what? I think them doing that. Could also be intentional because 
um, they don't want Superman to overshadow Carr because it is her show. So I think that may be partially why he didn't have such a huge like presence to him. But I don't. I have an idea. That's just a theory that I have. And I think that's the reason why currently right now, because it was asked during some kind of um, some kind of thing that they held for like TV shows and all that kind of stuff, where they announced the return of all the four shows for next year. It was asked, "Is Superman going to be returning to Supergirl?" And Greg Berlanti, who runs all these shows, said he would love it. And then CW president, the the guy said. Uh, no plans at this time because I think they're also afraid as well. If they have him on too much, it's going to overshadow her. Because I know a lot of people are asking for a Superman show, but even then, I think that would still overshadow her show. Oh yeah, I, I, I think. I mean, I would personally love it, and I know that it would probably ruin the Supergirl show. But I think if they did a Superman show and Supergirl show kind of just went away, they could still bring on Supergirl from time to time and keep those other characters around on his show because they could kind of morph her show into his. Because realistically, if you think about it, Supergirl in season one and even in season two, a lot of what they're doing is stuff that's Superman related because they can't do Superman every episode. They can't do him. They can't just exactly. do his show. Um, and maybe CW doesn't want to do Superman show because they did, they did Smallville for a long time. Oh, yeah. So they're, you know, but I think it's just everyone demands it. And I think over time, they might do it. Do if, you think they will? Ever bring in Superboy into the show? I know they're doing Cadmus, so I'm curious. I, I think the ending of season two, because now they have a season three confirmed. I guarantee you the season two finale cliffhanger, because how they did this, the pod in season one. Oh yeah. I guarantee you, to be Superboy. The mid the the finale of season two will be Superboy in Cadmus. He wakes up and then credits. I think. Now that would be dope. No, now uh, Jeff Johns announced there'd be another that they're going to announce another dc tv show outside of black lightning right yeah yeah because i mean we already know black lightning's happening and i don't even think black lightning's in the arrowverse so i don't really know why they keep making shows that aren't in the arrowverse i don't think i think that's why constantine didn't do so well well for one it was on friday nights which is a horrible time slot for two constantine originally wasn't in the arrowverse so i feel like people don't like they care about having a shared universe because it's something like if there's bigger opportunities for crossovers and and they retconned it and they brought him in on Arrow season yes. four. one of the highlights yeah. from season four. Yes, so if he was, I feel like, our like originally from originally in the Arrowverse, I think the show probably would have done a little better because people that watch Arrow would have watched it, or people that watch Flash would have watched it. But they did pick it up for the CW seed as an animated thing, so. Which is cool, and I also think because how they do the Vixen show where they have um, guest appearances of other characters from the live action and the animated form. So we're going to see adventures with Constantine and other characters in the Arrowverse in animated form. That would be dope. But I think what would be really cool is I think this also gives a chance of Constantine to actually appear live action. Even more. more. Yeah, because the original deal was the fact that Constantine had a one a one off deal for Arrow season four. Like that was his one off deal. The fact that now that they've picked up a Constantine show, they've brought the original voice, like the actual guy back to voice. He's like the perfect Constantine, like my opinion. So I think that with this deal, CW has the rights to that character now. Like they have the rights to that character. So I think that we're gonna see Constantine appear. Now, you when you mentioned Vixen, I have a question because I could like uh, I don't I haven't watched much of Legends. I mean, I watched some of it, but not much of it. So, Vixen, the original Vixen, she got her name from Cisco, right? Yes. No, wait, no. Maybe because I th- I think in the animated thing she got her name from Cisco. I think I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen. So how does so this Vixen is her grandmother? How does she have her name as a vixen? <laughs> I don't understand how. I don't think they really thought that one out. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I think that they called her that maybe, or that's what the totem is. I don't know. I, was just, I thought you I thought you knew. Uh, it's, I wish I did. It, it's, it's really confusing because, I mean, I think with them having a, a vixen on Legends and then having another vixen on a animated form, the original vixen, the one we know, uh, 
it's kind of confusing, I guess. Especially because all of the characters, Cisco, um, Felicity, Oliver, and Barry, they all interacted with the other Vixen. And yeah. They didn't ever mention anything in the f- crossover about there being another Vixen. They didn't want to say. I think it'd be too good. No. Yeah, I guess. But I just thought it was kind of strange that they didn't. Like, could you imagine if the Vixen from Legends and the Vixen from the actual Vixen animated form that was on Arrow appear at the same time during the crossover? I, I think that'd be too much. I don't even know what would happen if they met. I mean, I don't know that the, this universe's timeline. Uh, I don't even know where Vixen Season 2 falls in. I think Vixen Season 2 falls in before Arrow Season 4. Cause, I think it could because the way the first yeah. season of Vixen was. Yeah, it, it's confusing. But well, we went off track there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, so Supergirl, I think it's getting better, but we'll see. Um now to another show, The Flash. Season. Flash. This I, I've I've been really enjoying the season a lot. Like, Have you? Oh yeah, I've been loving it. Um my only thing is though is that I feel like the Savitars, they, they held off the Savitar stuff a little bit. You said like, you think they should have? No, I think they should have brought it in sooner. Like Exactly. That was what I was about to say. Um, I don't think there was much build up to Savitar at all. We seen him beat up, um, what's the guy's name, the rival? Yeah. Well, we, we assumed it was him because they didn't exactly, I mean, we didn't know at the time what he looked like. But then I feel like out of nowhere, he just appeared. And then the next episode was the mid-season finale. Yeah, it was. They, they gave a lot of Savitar in the mid-season finale, but I feel like that they should have been doing Doctor Alchemy and then showing Savitar like teases every episode, not like every couple episodes. Like, don't do something and then just wait like four episodes, then do something else. It was kind of weird. Uh, out of all the shows, The Flash was uh, very intriguing to me because this the the first half of the season they weren't building up to anything. At all, like every episode was basically a villain of the week, until yeah. like the last two, which I don't know why they did it that way. I think, I think that they were kind of stumbling a bit because they they were like, "We're gonna do Flashpoint for season three. and then they kind of realized, I think they kind of dropped the ball on Flashpoint a little bit because they only did. I, do. I think so too. I mean, I don't I don't think they should have done it at all. Mainly, I could see why they. It only lasted one episode because, I mean, when Barry's in this timeline, right, his new timeline for three months, how do you, when the other shows come on, does Barry just not exist? Like, how do you explain that? Because Flashpoint is a change to that timeline. It's not a different one. So the what they, would be like, what, what will happen to the other shows? What they should have did was him do Flashpoint, and then we don't skip ahead three months to the future because we missed three months of whatever's going on. Like, exactly. They just well, because I guess go go. Well, we're off break, so we got to just jump ahead now because we're currently following whatever year and day and time it is in the real world is what's happening on the show in their one the, universe. One of my biggest complaints or uh, or dislikes about Flashpoint is how now we have no idea. I mean, from the five, or the four seasons of Arrow and the two seasons of Flash or whatever, but now we have no idea what ac- actually still happened. So any inconsistency or like plot hole, you can just say flashpoint, and there's no way for us to know what still happened. Yeah, because I mean the only the only real main thing we know that has changed is the fact that Diggle has a he has a son not a daughter, which I don't know why they did that because <laughs> even <laughs> still to this day they still not explain. If you just watch Arrow, you would have no idea what was going on. Yeah. He just had a son out of nowhere, and it wasn't until after the crossover where he even mentioned Flashpoint. But even then, if you only watch Arrow, you still would not know what was going on. So I think that was a little, a little strange. Yeah, and they try to do a little crossover with Felicity there at the beginning where Barry travels over to the Arrow Cave, and luckily, surprisingly, no one else is there besides Felicity in the Arrow Cave when there's like 10 people down there every single day. Uh, exactly. He just travels over there and starts explaining all this, and they, they go into explanation, but it's just like... Okay, I I, I kind of wish they would have held off the flashpoint thing until maybe like season four, you oh, know, yeah. another season of just building up 
the Flash's Central City and him building up his hero, and then him make the humongous mistake, and then, then kind of deal with Flashpoint for a couple episodes at the beginning of season four. So I see a lot of complaints about the Flash and their villains always being speedsters and him being slower. And I know it's a, sh- it's a show about speedsters, so I was wondering, what is your opinion on that? Do you think the new speedster that wants to kill him for God knows why that's fashion to him, do you think that's getting kind of old, or do you think that it has to be that way? It's kind of like the argument about um, Green Arrow always fighting vigilante villains with bow and arrows. It's it's the same argument that you could say about, well, for Legends, it's uh, time travels versus time travelers. It, it's... It has to follow a formula because that's I can tell you one good reason, even though we're not in the arrow subject. The one main reason why season four arrow bombed and failed is because the villain was way out of his league. Oh, exactly. I agree. It okay. made no sense. So in this instance, Barry Allen can take out basically anybody. They found cool ways where when he's fighting non speedsters like Mirror Master this season or um, was it Magenta? I think that's who it was. Yeah, Magenta. Yeah, they found cool ways, and even before in p- previous seasons, where he is unable to defeat them with a snap of finger. He just can't do it for whatever reason. Their powers are completely different. He's not used to them. It's something brand new. But in yeah, order- they nerf him pretty pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, they they find ways, but I think it makes sense because I mean he's only been really doing this for now three years, not even fully three years. So, I mean. He's just an upcoming superhero. He's not like Oliver, who's been training for five years, and then now he's got five more years under his belt. Barry Allen's only been doing this for three. It but, just bothers me because in the Magenta episode, she had a police car in the air, right? Yeah. And she was like, you can either stop me or save the police officer. He could do both. Realistically, yeah, he has time to do both because he saved the police officer, and now she's gone. I don't understand how fast Barry's supposed to be in this universe. It, but, it alters I mean, I, whatever he I needs. I spend my disbelief for the show. It, 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 it all depends on what he has to do. If he has to save one cop or take her out, he's got to go a certain speed. If he has to travel back in time to try to do Flashpoint again before Jay Garrick stops him in the second episode, then I guess he does that. Um, but to answer your question about I, – I think it makes sense that he has to fight speedsters. I think it makes logical sense because, I mean, if he didn't, I, I can't see them doing Mirror Master as a main villain for the entirety of a season. I didn't even really like what they did with Mirror Master. Yeah, they did a little bit of changes. I did, I did like the Snark cameo though in that oh, yeah. flash. That was pretty. I was cool. just kind of I was kind of underwhelmed by Mirror Master. Yeah, he was definitely not the Mirror Master. He had some hype comics built up to him. He had some hype built up to him, and then I just feel like that wasn't really what people was expecting. He's just a dude in a suit with a beard. Exactly. And he he knows how to travel through mirrors. Which the the one cool thing he did was was trap Barry in that uh, that mirror. That was kind of cool. And then yeah, finally, pretty... then them trying to figure out how to get him out, which obviously Killer Frost that helped. But um, I think it makes logical sense why they have Speedsters as the main arc villains. And I think with Savitar, I just think it's a cool design. I like what they kind of revealed of how it's all—it's always future Barry that's messing with these speedsters. Exactly. <laughs> with Reverse Flash in the future, that—that that, that's why Thon comes back. He messes with Savitar in the future, so now Savitar is back here. Speaking of, we—I know it doesn't have to do with season three, but they never really explained why Reverse Flash hated Barry. I mean, they kind of explained why he was a Reverse Flash in the episode where he returned, but. I remember in season one, um, Tom Cavanaugh or Wells, he had a bunch of monologues about how um, he's going to get everything that Barry took away from him, and how Barry escaped, and there's going to be a reckoning. But we never found out exactly why, you know. That is a good point. We've never learned that. I think the main also, reason why, because I think the final reverse. season is going to be Reverse Flash again. Yeah, and like, th- why is the Reverse Flash... I, I'm... I'm so confused by how this universe does time travel because Reverse Flash never would have got stuck back in the past, right? Yeah. Because he's in Legends. So <laughs> it happened the way it did. Like, I don't get it. I don't know. Well, he's trying to rewrite Destiny, which is in the which is what they've kind of explained in Legends uh, with the Spear of Destiny or whatever. He's trying to. Oh, he's yeah. Trying to, he's trying to. Yeah, well, he's trying to rewrite the timeline. That's what's happening. Okay. Like, that's his goal. Um, that's a good question because time travel and 
it's really confusing. And also, how can Reverse Flash be Flash's most iconic villain and most, you know, like the polar opposite when Zoom was faster than Reverse Flash? And now Savitar is the god of speed. Exactly. It's like, is Reverse Flash going to get faster than both those guys at a time? <laughs> That's how it's the ultimate rivalry, I guess. Speaking of, as a, I guess, sort of a segue, uh, talking about Legends, because um, this is kind of related with Reverse Flash. The Legends, they, they fix, what do they call it, aberrations or changes yeah. to the timeline. Why wouldn't they fix Barry running back in the past? And how would they not know it. about it? Why wouldn't they go back? I mean, I know for story purposes why they wouldn't. Well, you got to think about this. Like, what is it? What, what's those ghost things that follow speedsters when they time travel? Uh, time rates. Time rates. So why are there no time rates whenever the legends travel? Because they're in the legend ship? I just feel like, I mean, I get that they just want to tell the stories. But to me, like, it's really hard for me to just accept that that makes sense. I think the explanation is that time rates chase after speedsters and that there's supposed to be people that keep in keep the other timeline in order, I guess. I don't know. Because if I was a if I was a time master, like the legends claim to be, I would go back in time and stop Barry when he was on the porch from Yeah, from, from going in and going doing flashpoint. I don't know. They might explore that in an episode. Like, can we stop Barry from doing flashpoint? Can we like, prefer what he did? That would but, be cool, but I don't know if they do that though. And they never really showed. They never showed um, Reverse Flash stopping the Barry Allen going back in time to kill the mother. We just saw him stab her again. Exactly. But, <sighs> There's just so much, so much that they're that they're doing. Yeah, and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Legends thing because I got a lot to say about that because I'm I'm starting to get a little annoyed with that. <laughs> um, but for Flash, I mean, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and I do like the fact that they're they're actually doing the killer frost story with Caitlin. Cause I mean, if you really think about it, Caitlin's story is kind of stale. If you're not talking Ronnie or her counterpart on earth too, which is killer frost. So exactly. I'm kind of liking that they're doing this. And I think what they're going to do, I'm not saying that they're going to do what they do with captain cold, where he's citizen cold, where he's a good guy on another earth. But I think they're going to make it to where she can control her powers. See, um, I agree. Yeah. I think that's the kind of a, a box that they accidentally wrote themselves into because I think they, when they started the show, they wanted him to have two members on his team that would eventually become characters that we know, like Cisco. We're like, oh, he's going to become Vibe eventually. And yeah. Like Caitlin. But I feel like they don't want to get rid of the actress or Caitlin. So they don't really know, you know, to make her a villain because we kind of got to get rid of her. I mean, I, I really like her as an actress and I think that she works on the show. Um, so I think that's kind of the tough point it's kind of like what they did with um tom cavanaugh's character reverse flash was done but they wanted to keep the actor which they found multiple ways to do i think it's cool but i mean i think at a point <clears throat> at a point they need to just bring back the sec uh, the earth 2 with uh, yeah. jesse and keep the hey, hr grew on me like he's grown on me i yeah. mean because it's tom cavanaugh but at the same time i much prefer harry yeah, I, yeah it's so weird like it's like it's like you know, it's uh it's a Dr. Wells, season one. Season two, it's Harry. Season three, HR. Like, they have to find different ways to call him Harry without saying the same. Why exactly did they, if they still have Tom Cavanaugh, which is very clear, why did they yeah. change it into HR? Because they didn't want Jesse, or I don't understand why they introduced I, I don't think the actress who plays Jesse Quick is available all the time. Like, I don't think she's under a full contract. They could have very easily left her on Earth, too. She wants to go to her yeah, anyways. Yeah, she can just travel back whenever she wants to. So, I, I mean, I just don't – I thought HR was an alien for them because I knew the alien was the crossover, but he wasn't. Yeah. So I don't really see why they did that. I think there's still more to that character than we know. HR? Like, I think there's still – yeah, I think there's still more that we don't know about him. Because uh, Jesse's coming back, so. Yeah, well, I mean, well, yeah, what the leaked pictures, but, I mean, I'm excited. But, yeah, I, I think HR – and Harry are going to interact when Jesse Quick comes back. Because I think they're going to return for whatever. I'm assuming Barry is going to recruit all the speedsters he can to take on Savitar in the, in the middle of the season three, and it's not going to work. So, <laughs> Well, here's my question. Yeah. Do you think, now what, what we know about the future, and Barry's going to try to change the future, do you think 
they're going to end up killing someone else, or you think they're still going to kill, kill Iris? Oh, no. They're not going to kill Iris. But can you and, imagine the shock if they still killed her? Because people would assume that they wouldn't. So would oh, they yeah. just killed her anyways? Oh, yeah. A tra- yeah, it would still be a shock, but I think it, it's, it's blasphemy to say, but it reminds me of Arrow Season 4, Grave. Because exactly. now they got to decide if they want to kill her or not. They put themselves in that corner. Because now they have to kill somebody. Because Savitar will end up killing someone, but it's not going to be Iris. Because they already showed the death of Iris. If they do it again, it's a shock, but we've already seen it. Exactly. So my theory is that it's going to be Joe instead of Iris. <laughs> yep. Because, think about it. Cisco is viable to the team. They lose Cisco. That's a huge loss for the team. They're, I don't know how the show's going to continue without Cisco because he's the brains behind everything. He, he's now – they're making him into vibe. He's actually going to be wearing a suit and actually going out and fighting. They have Kilt, Caitlin developing into Killer Frost. They have Wally West becoming now officially Kit Flash. And we've already seen the death of Iris. Like that was the whole big what-the-fuck moment. So I just see them killing Joe. My thing is, though, what – the way they write Barry's character, do you think they really kill another one of his parents? I mean, this man messed up the entire timeline after his dad died. And which kind of, I mean, because he went, he had this whole moment, he was in the Speed Force, where he was had a moment of clarity about letting go. He visited his mom's grave and everything. And he still changed the timeline. So do you think if Joe died, he'd be able to get, like, move on from it? Or do you think he'd? Well, I mean, he's lost so many people. I mean, exactly. whoever they put that in that position, he is going to have to somehow get through because they have a season four. <laughs> he's got to get through it. I'm really curious if they're just going to have him stop Savitar before he kills anyone. Or, 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 I wonder if they're just going to kill Julian because they don't want to – because, I mean, I don't know if Draco Malfoy wants to be in season four. So, I'm surprised people didn't know that that was going to be Dr. Alchemy. It was so obvious. Come on. <laughs> His name was even – the Julian. Julian. This, it, it, yeah. Yeah. I just thought that was kind of strange. Yeah, I, I think I, it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Julian because now they're making Julian part of the team now, and I could see them killing Julian. Hopefully, yeah. the team doesn't become too large. Well, because because well because they revert Julian away from Savitar into being Doctor Alchemy. So I could see it fit that Savitar takes out Julian. As betraying him, maybe. I'm just glad the whole entire Cisco thing is over. I hope to God it is. If they Cisco do it, so much hate, even I was not feeling Cisco's vibe. Ah, <laughs> vibe. <laughs> like, I wasn't feeling it at all. I thought they were ruining his character. I mean, I got what his character was coming from. It's not like I thought his um, like his reasonings were invalid. I just think I, I just didn't like it personally. If they go back to that story again, where he is, he gets pissed off at Barry again for changing the timeline. I'm gonna seriously rant because I can't. They've already done it twice. We we get it. And then he had so much. He had so much story in that crossover. Yeah, they 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 covered it a lot, and then they of course brought it back up again in the midseason finale, where you know his brother, who isn't really his brother, is like, "Open the box, open it. It'll the be fun." Legends episode was mainly Cisco. Yeah, and then and then he discovered. Oh, look what I did! I changed the timeline for the worse, and he, of course, has learned his mistake. Like, I'm I'm, I'm glad <laughs> they were able to redeem Cisco because there was a F Cisco hashtag going around. Oh yeah, it was getting bad. It was. I, was like, I felt almost... bad for the actor because it, it's not his fault. You know. I mean, obviously, if people didn't like Cisco. He was doing a good job at acting it, but. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, but like, just like, don't get mad. Dude. You can hate the characters, just don't hate on the actor. Like, he's, it's not his fault that the writers are doing this. Do you, do you like the costumes they use on the Flash? I like them. I think that the Kid Flash one, I'm still trying to get used to, because I mean, it looks a lot like Reverse Flash. But um, Jesse Quick, I really like her costume because it's, oh, yeah, hers, hers really cool. it's different than the other ones we've seen. Uh, and I mean, even though Savitar's full CG, it's pretty cool that they're doing a full CG character. I'm uh, just, I'm wondering why they. I know that uh, people say it a lot, but it really does bother me that every almost every hero uses leather. Yeah, I've seen. It's not even like, you know, low key leather. It's like, okay, this is leather. Like this is fake leather. It's very yeah. obvious, and it's like in everyone's costume. 
Well, I get it because I mean it's it's cheaper because it, they got to keep the budget down because I mean especially for Flash they have a lot of CG they have to do. So I like the way they do the costumes on Supergirl. Yeah, I mean her suit. Like there's some shots on, especially in season two of her suit where she's like flying or she's standing around talking. It looks really good. I'm not the biggest fan of her cape. Well, Superman's cape was really long. Yeah. I don't know just a lie, but <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. That was, a, that was a really long cape, but <laughs> jumping back to the Flash. Um, so oh, far, yeah. um, I've been enjoying it. Probably not as much as I enjoyed season two, but that's mainly because of, I think, the first half of the season. Like, they weren't building to anything, so it wasn't as interesting. It was kind of a weekly villain kind of thing. And then, I've been uh, mostly yeah. excited for Arrow, which is kind of surprising to me because I thought I was done with that show. I know, because I was like, oh my god, is it going to fail? Like, I was so scared for season five, but <clears throat> yeah, the mid-season finale for Flash was just them moving in together. I'm like, all right. Cause... Did, you, did you see the promo for the newest Arrow? Yes. I you reacted to it? to it, and I was shocked. Well, let's just jump into it now. Arrow season five. Okay, uh, so why did they... Okay, where do you want to start? Well, let's start like that, that goddamn trailer. Let's just let's just talk about the, the elephant in the room here or the girl in the room in here. Okay, uh, so why do you think they spoiled that in the trailer? I mean, I know there was a big thing about you know reactors watching trailers and not watching trailers. I generally it really just depends on like what the next episode is. Because I don't yeah. watch them all the time, but I mean these are the first episodes back after a break, so of course I watch them. And I'm like I'm really, I really feel spoiled that they put that in there. I think the reason why is I think there's a lot more than just it's it's Black Siren. Like I think it's going to go in a lot of different directions that we're not expecting because I believe that's probably going to happen probably within the first or second break. My thing is like because based off the trailer, right? They they think it's Laurel and they're all happy and they don't really know what to think. And I thought that would have been really cool if the fans felt the same way. They think it's Laurel. They're kind of happy, but they're a little, they don't know what to think because she's just out of nowhere back. And then we all kind of find out that she's not Laurel at the same time as a team. I think that would have been cooler because now when everyone's watching, not just reactors, they're going to be sitting there like, okay, that's Black Siren. Well, then also someone brought up this. Like there's a shot of when Black Siren is screaming when you first see it, she has a nose ring in. Hmm. But in the mid-season finale clip, the very end, she does not. Hmm. So the I don't know qu- what they're going to do with that. Because well, the theory funny. is that the theory is it could possibly be two laurels. Now that would be really cool. One is Black Siren, and one is Laurel who faked her own death. Now that would be dope. Because I want, I want the original Laurel back. Because. I know Wendy Miracle said recently, and I haven't watched your rant yet, but I plan to, that you can't do a Green Arrow show. It's kind of hard to do a Green Arrow show without the Black Canary. Well, you don't say. <laughs> like, say, you really? Like, now the, you're, now well, you guys killed now the first you, canary. Now you know canary, that. Brought her back, and you killed yeah. the second canary. I mean, you've done it multiple times. I mean, I think you would know. They should have killed Quentin Lance instead of Laurel. To be completely been, honest with you. I think it would have done the same impact. Because Quinn's barely, without his daughter's his purpose isn't really, I like the actor, Paul Blackthorne. Yeah. But his, he doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Not anymore. No. All he does is drink. And he was, um, he was and I feel like <laughs> they pinpointed did to be so much. They did that plot so much that, you know, the relapse plots for me in uh, shows like where characters go back to drinking or whatever, never really been that interesting because they, they he keeps going back to it over and over and over again, even when he, like, you know, over, like, Trump's over it, he still does it. Yeah. And it's like, that can't be his only story that they can think of for Lance. I just, they should have just killed Quentin. But I don't know what to expect. My, because what I've been hearing, some speculation, people are theorizing. The biggest theory is that Black Siren is not going to stick around on the team after this episode, but she's going to be around and then possibly – the end of season five, she's going to join the team and she's going to actually be a good Laurel because see what they've kind of explained. And I think they're going to have to explain this in the arrow episode because it was only on flash because they've explained how Laurel lost her sister on earth Two. Like that's now she's black siren. 
I have a feeling when the Black Siren runs into Sarah from Earth One, she's gonna come around. And- I think. I think that's what's gonna happen because I bet that when Black Siren is talking about Sarah, I bet you that Oliver at a, at some point is gonna get a hold of Sarah somehow, bring her back to 2017. Black Siren's going to meet Sarah, and then they're going to connect on a level because they can't explain it because that's not her Laurel and that's not her Sarah, but they somehow connect. Do and you that's, mean, how, that's how it's going to, I guess, work. You probably mentioned this in your rant, but do you think they would make Felicity Black Canary? Do you think they'd go that far? No. <laughs> the beauty of the beauty of this, even though a lot of people still hate him, Mark Dugenheim responded to ComicBook.com's tweet because they tagged. Uh, Whitney Merkel, they tagged Mark Guggenheim, they tagged um, they tagged the Arrow Twitter, I think they also tagged Stephen Amell, saying uh, here's what Felicity Smoke could look as Black Canary, and then they tagged everybody, and they go please, like, could you please do this? And Mark Guggenheim responded like, the day after I made my video saying, nope, sorry. Like, <laughs> Thank gosh, because I I, uh, I really did not want that to happen. I, I was I was being quiet because a couple days prior to the article that made me lose my shit was that um, Winnie Merkel did an interview and was asked about Felicity or maybe it was Mark Guggenheim, one of the two. Um, they were mentioning how Felicity is going to go through a change, which was kind of hinting towards how she was before she joined the team when she had the black hair and she was the hacker and she was just more dark. Um, makes logical sense. She's killed a bunch of people in season four with that nuke. She lost her boyfriend due to Prometheus, even though it's Oliver's fault. It was Prometheus that did it. Yeah. Um, she's not going to be the same. So that is the logical step because Felicity has never once tried to be a vigilante, even though she's dealt through a ton of other bullshit in the entirety so of the this time. I thought she was going to be Artemis before they ever introduced Artemis. But no. so this Artemis, do you think that she's going to be a character that will come around or no? Like they'll, yeah. I I think I I I don't know. It's either she is really working Prometheus, and then she sees the error of her ways and tries to reclaim the Artemis role and be back on the team, or she's actually double crossing Prometheus. Kind of like the Young Justice kind of thing with. Did you finish Young Justice? Oh yeah. Okay. With Aqualad, kind of how he was a double double agent. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. But because the team, I don't. Maybe they didn't have enough time with Missy's finale, but the reactions to her being crossing them did not seem big enough like not that i want it i don't think the episode about it but they didn't really seem bothered by it they're just like oh oh, i don't think i don't think they even know i think that she's hiding it from both parties but i think she's either secretly working for the team and they just don't know it yet and then we'll get hints in the later half of season five that she is working with the team and that she's actually double crossing prometheus or she's working for herself and screwing both of them over some way what do you? What's your opinion on team the new team Arrow and how large it is? Because I like the characters, but I don't really see why the team's so large. I don't see the usefulness of it because Bragman is just an overpowered character, and I don't really see his purpose because they kind of glimpsed over when he had that plot about you know trying to kill the person that destroyed his entire family, Haven Rock. He found out it was Felicity. He um, got over it and now he's just kind of there but he's so overpowered that the only thing he can really do is stop bullets and stuff so i don't i don't really see his purpose yeah i see where you're coming from because i mean um it's like a double-edged sword on one hand it's cutting into you uh the team's too big it's too many people i I agree i think it's way too big but on the other hand you have a, a lot of new characters to start getting invested in and i think Yes, Ragman is way overpowered, and they kind of glossed it over a bit because if they use him too much, then there's no need for everybody else. But then at the same time, you can think, yeah, it's like, it's like, why don't Ragman just do more? It's not a show, but it's like he's so powerful. What can't he do? Uh, they got they got to find some kind of weakness because they don't have a real weakness for him yet. And I, I think, think I think someone will find something. Do you think Ragman has any relation to Prometheus and why they their masks look similar? That'd be an interesting twist that Prometheus is related to Ragman. Because this Prometheus is, is is different from the comics, but his costume, as far as the face goes, is so similar to Ragman. I don't think that's a coincidence. A lot of people get them confused too. Like, yeah, like I don't yeah, I don't know. I think it was like the second episode, the the ending sequence with um with 
Yeah, Prometheus and I forget what's his character's name. Um, Tobias. Yeah, Tobias Church. And and I remember some people who were reacting to the show, like other people that I don't really know, but I was just watching reactions of the episode. People were like, hey, it's Ragman. Like, that's not Ragman. Like, that's yeah. Prometheus. It's not, there's no way that was a coincidence. And they're just like, oh, they kind of look similar, like when they're designing the characters. So I do don't, you think maybe. Prometheus might be Ragman's dad or something? I think is, I mean, it's possible. One, now that you bring that up, I don't, with these superhero shows, it can either be like um, done really well or done really bad, which an example is for Zoom, for example. I don't really like the whole guess who it is trope. I feel like that's they use that to kind of keep people interested, which makes sense. But with Dr. Alchemy or Savitar, Prometheus and Zoom, it's like you spend the entire time like, guess who it is? And so everyone's making all these theories of who they think it is and why. Like they think, oh, it's Tommy for this reason. And then if it's not that, they're just going to be disappointed that the, the actuality didn't live up to what, you know, the theory that they had in their head. So if it's not Tommy, people are going to be disappointed. If it's oh, a yeah. character we've never met before, people are going to be disappointed. So it's kind of like. I, I think with you, it's, it's definitely a character that we know. I just don't think it's the character we everyone thinks it's going to be. Because when they do that, you know, you have to, if it's a character we know, you have to explain why and the why has to make sense. Yeah, because for, for Zoom, a lot of people thought it was his dad, they thought it was Joe, they thought it was his mom, they thought it was Future Barry. So there's all these things, and then it just turned out to be Jay. Who was actually Hunter's yeah. Almond. But yeah. Yeah. It, and it's just like, the guess who it is thing bothers me, because with Dr. Alchemy, I mean, I was like, I know this is Julian, but the whole, that whole thing of reveals is just, because when they reveal Prometheus, like, I don't really care who it is, I just want the story to be good. But when there was when people thought it was um, the son of what was his name Justin Claiborne, yeah, I just it, I don't care. I mean, it's a character we don't know. Like, yeah, so why I, should we it's care? Not, I don't think it's Justin Claiborne. I think I, mean, it, I hope not because that was when I thought it was going to be him. I was like so disappointed, but they didn't show what it is. So I think it's going to be a character we know, but his real name is Justin Claiborne. Like we know him as a different character name, but he's actually been Justin Claiborne. Like that would be really cool. Like, it's the face of someone we know, and we know them as a different name, but their actual name is Justin Claiborne. So it's a complete twist. And I think with the Zoom thing, it made made it more interesting because they're dealing with multiple Earths, and the fact that the way they revealed it was that he killed his doppelganger at the time. You're like, what? Which is really confusing. <laughs> they didn't say anything. Like, it, like literally, it was the cutaway. Like, that that was it. They just showed him, take off the mask, and it's it. They, a lot of people think it's Tommy. I don't really know why people think it's Tommy. I think they just want it to be Tommy. <laughs> Tommy from Earth think, 2, which I don't, yeah, I don't really think it's likely because he's on a oh, he's a main character in a different show. Yeah, and I think the only way that well, people's arguments we will he he only, he only has to be on set when he takes off his mask. So I understand where people are coming from, but I think that once you reveal it's Tommy, we want to see him without the mask on. Exactly. Like, and even if it is Tommy from like say it's like Tommy from Earth Two, and he somehow got over here. Uh, during the season two thing where the portal and he somehow got through or something fine. But once he reveals himself as Prometheus, then you, you have to show him. You have to show him the good things. He, he's got, he's got to be interacting with Oliver Queen and the team without the mask. A and lot. That's really hard to do because Tommy's dead. So yeah. I mean, and, the fact the show, and he's not even in Canada to shoot it. Exactly. So, so. That's my thing. I really like the what Errol's doing. I mean, it's only the first half of the season. I'm knocking on wood that they don't mess it up somehow. I mean, they very easily could if they try to force too much relationship drama. Um, yeah, and I think so far that they've dealt with it well because, I mean, the whole people were really getting pissed because obviously people were still pissed off at season four and the fact that how Felicity was acting and all that shit and the fact that they gave her a boyfriend early on on and it's like we don't care about her relationship because people just didn't care people just wanted to see felicity behind that computer helping the team they didn't care about her personal life they didn't care exactly so. i don't really think they know same thing with cisco i don't really think they know how to outside of being a funny character how to really give them plots because the wheelchair plot they're like we don't have enough time to really do it accurately let's just cure it um the haven rock thing they pretty much glanced over it um her running the ceo being the ceo i mean they, she was a ceo for a while but none of her plots stick well unless it's relationship based and i think that's her main problem 
and I think that um, the, I think that it would probably suit better if the show, like instead of even though it's an hour long, but has commercials. If the episodes were about an hour long each, exactly, have more time to develop these things. But obviously, they just got rid of the boyfriend. They just got rid of him. Like they found a really cool way to do it, which I applaud them because I did not see it coming. Like holy shit, they oh, killed yeah. off the boyfriend. But now it's just like now we just got to get Felicity back on focusing on the team and go from there. Is that? I that, really like, don't like Curtis. <laughs> I just thought that in there. Yeah, like, yeah, I think I don't know because everyone it was, it's either a wild dog or Curtis you like the least from the team. It's what people, I, yeah, I really like wild dog though. Yeah, it's like it's either you like wild dog, don't like Curtis, or you like Curtis, don't like wild dog. It's like whichever, pick I guess, <laughs> like pick or one of the other. And uh, before we move on to legends, I do want to ask you, how do you feel about Talia Al Ghul being on Arrow? Uh, I don't see why, like, I don't understand why. I think it's a tie in to Prometheus. I think that's what they're saying. I mean, they must really not be doing Talia Al Ghul in the DCEU at all because, I mean, they did Ra's Al Ghul and they did Nisa, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't really see how Talia. I mean, I guess we'll see, but I don't really see what she could really what role she'll play. I think that I think they're gonna bring back Nisa too. I think they're gonna bring her back. I mean, a lot of people are annoyed by the amount of Batman things they give him. At this point, I don't really care because. I mean, in this universe, that's kind of who Oliver Queen is. He's that Batman character. He's not Batman, but it's pretty much who he is as far as when it comes to the their little league. And I mean, I don't mind it. I don't. Uh, care they start doing Joker that. and stuff. No, no, that's something else, but I, I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't mind it. They're doing these type of things because number one, Gotham, the show, will never do this. I'm and, so tired of it. I gave up on Gotham. <laughs> and I used to be a really big Gotham fan too. Oh my god! Yeah, I. I'm all caught up, but I'm, at this point, I just, you know, I just don't care. Like, I, I just don't care as much because they really dropped the ball. Because they could have started off with Batman, and they started off with baby Batman. Baby, he's a baby. <laughs> like, not even, like, not even, like, Smallville, where he's no. older. He's straight up just... He's a kid. And a like, show about Bruce Wayne a little older, before he becomes Batman, and him just being Bruce Wayne, that could have probably been a little better than a little Batman. And they focus on, and they and, and they just focus on Bruce Wayne instead of James Gordon all the time, like. Exactly. But they drop the ball, so that's why I hope the show gets canceled, so CW can pick up the rights for Batman, and we can have Batman on the show. But really cool. I think with Talia, I think it's going to be interesting. But I mean, if they do a little hint hint of Talia having a son named Damien, and the father is kind of brooding like Oliver, I'm going to die. Uh, that would be really cool. I can see them. They dropped that kind of line on Supergirl where she said that her cousin. Worked with the vigilante, lots of gadgets, lots of dark uh, past, you know. Um, That's dope. Which is a cool. I, mean, I assume we'd at least get Nightwing at some point. But everyone, everyone wants Nightwing on Arrow. Everybody. I, mean, I don't yeah. see him being in the movies anytime soon. So I don't. Why not? Well, the well, there was a rumor for a while that Nightwing was going to be appearing on Justice League, but I, I don't think it makes sense. Like Dick Grayson, yeah. just, just stay in Bloodhaven. You can reference him, but don't bring him on the movies yet. Yeah, like my thing is, well, I know we're about to jump into Legends, but with the movies, I feel like they already have so many characters they have to introduce. Their main Justice League members, I don't really see them fitting any, like, Titans or sidekicks in at any point. Maybe I can second say wave, but... open the Batman movie. Yeah, but you say you want to get into Legends to end it off with? Yeah, so Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. Um... Now, I, I've seen, like, a couple, and then I was just like, not my thing. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Legends Season 2 so far? To me, I like what they're doing in terms of the, the Legion of Doom, and um, I'm liking the new additions of the Legends, like with the older Vixen and, and uh, Citizen Steel or whatever. Um, but my main issue that I've started to notice, especially with Season 2, is that this is the way, this is their way of just doing an episode in a certain time period. Because these, exactly. other shows, these other shows, they can't do that. Like, Flash can travel back in time, but he's not going to travel back to the 1800s. He's not going to travel to, like, uh, the 11, the, the 1,100, you know, some with some empire. Or so. It's not going to happen. He's not going to travel to Japan. It's not going to happen. So they just do episodes in a certain time period because they can do it and they can get away with it. And That's one of my main dislikes is that, 
there's not much consistency because they're in a different time period every week. And that's just, I, I mean, I like the whole shows being in their cities, having their jobs and, you know, the consistency of the other shows. And this show is just kind of all over the place weekly. That's just, I can't get into it because it's different every week. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the, the concept and the content they're bringing, but, I mean, they're just doing time periods just to do it. Like, it feels like that they're they're – setting up okay we're gonna go to these time periods in this season so let's somehow find a way to build around these arcs and these stories we're gonna tell within these time periods and how it's all gonna fit because the first episode back they're gonna have an actor play george lucas like because star yeah, wars because they can yeah star wars is the big thing so of course they're gonna have someone play george lucas just because they can because they have a time period they're gonna be traveling back to like in the 70s or whatever and George Lucas is going to be there. And I guarantee you, he's going to see the legends in action and he's going to get inspired to do Star Wars. Like, it's going to be a fucking... Yo, they were like, oh, that's a nice ship. Yeah, oh, I, I guarantee you. Like... Oh, he's going to look at the Wave Rider and think of the Millennium Falcon. God damn it. <sighs> I, I hope they don't do that, honestly. I really I, don't. They're going to do it. Because they, they've done that before with, like, previous things. Like, this little boy is going to grow up to be some kind of, like, scientist or whatever, and they kind of inspire, like, how he's going to name himself when he's out there in the public eye. And, uh, uh it's, it, yeah, I, I, now, I just now thought about that just now. They're going to they're gonna do a, a reference to the Wave Rider, and George Lucas is going to get, wow, that, that, oh, that, that's really cool. I should definitely do something with that. And he's make the Millennium Falcon. That's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I really, I really hope they don't do that. My Another thing I don't, with Legends, I noticed, for one, Firestorm, they never merge. I guess because they want to show both actors. But, yeah. I mean, you kind of pick the character that is makes that is two characters make into one. They, like, never, ever merge. They're always in a situation where they're separated. Like, yeah. one character's doing this, one character's doing that, and they can't merge. They never merge, and none of the characters are ever in costume. Yeah, and the one time that they... The one time they, they were about to merge, they somehow pulled away. They pulled away uh, Stein. Like, oh, Stein's gone now, so now we can't merge and fight Damian Dark in this fight in this nightclub. Um, I think yeah. that has to do with either that they want to show both actors equally, or the effects were too expensive. But I mean, it's you budget. guys picked Firestorm, so you guys gotta figure that out. It's budget because there was an interview done by one of the writers for season one, and. They were asked about why do you guys like like it was obviously the hot girl and hot guy like why don't you show them a lot and why don't we see Firestorm in every episode and she clearly just like outright just said it's budget like that's why we have that we yeah that that's budget that's why we don't do it all the time like I have another question yeah okay because I don't, I don't keep up with Legends as much it's just I mean I tried because it was connected in the universes but I just couldn't. Okay, so they left in 2016, right? In the, the first episode of Legends. That's that's the time period they left, like the day, right? Yeah. Okay, so whenever they return back home, like for the crossovers or whatever, how how exactly do they determine when to come back? For example, when they left, Laura was still alive, so shouldn't they return back to the time where they left? I mean, because Arrow and Flash are still going. Like that timeline is still moving forward. Now they're in 2017, but the Legends left in 2016. Would they just always come back to technically the future? I guess, yes. Which makes which it makes logistical sense, but it doesn't make sense. To, I mean, I I just don't see because my I would assume that they would always come back to the moment that they left and just continue their lives. But if they're just coming back to the whatever moment the, our main characters are in, that doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, that is a good point, but I, because I, I mean, the way that they kind of explain how the legends could be a part of the crossover was that Felicity left them something for them to find. Like, yeah, okay, I don't that know, makes sense. I don't know what that is. Like, I don't know what she did. She left something for them to find in the future, or or I don't know. I mean, but, I guess they just oh, science. <laughs> so, the, the, the tech, um, the is, computers. I, mean, I guess. I guess it doesn't really matter because Legends is own show, and they're always going to be in time. But I would assume if Sarah ever needed to come back home, she would return to 2016 and her sister would still be alive. But now she knows her sister dies. But her sister died in the future when she left. So that's not her timeline. That's not her reality. It yeah. happens in the future, yes, but that's not. it wasn't in your, the future that you're in. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I just feel like 
she should always return back to 2016, which doesn't make sense at all. But that's the hole they brought themselves into. Yeah, it's the it's the problem with time travel because there's too many questions and it's a it's a whole thing of what you were saying. No right? answers. Just you know, just with, suspend your disbelief and just kind of with enjoy it. With these four shows and then Gotham and then Black Lightning and whatever show they're going to announce this year, do you think it's oversaturation of uh, DC TV? Because me myself, I just can't watch all of it. Um, I don't have the time to watch all of it, even though I would love to. Um, and it's just too much. For me, I just prefer Flash and Arrow because they're the first two, and I know, I mean, I've, those characters have been around longer, but do you think it's too much, or do you just think it's great that they're building onto the universe? I'm just glad that they're doing shows. I just think that it's just, it just all depends on the quality of the content, because they, yeah. as you see, Gotham is just, even though it's got its fans, a lot of people hate that show for what they did. I can guarantee you, if that was a Batman show and they called it Gotham and they focused on different characters and Batman showed it from time to time and we had some story arcs, but it focused on a ton of, like, like as it's built, but it's Batman instead of, Bruce, instead of young baby bat Bruce Wayne, exactly. then the show would be way more watchable and a lot more people, people would be watching it. I just think that if the content isn't good, people are not going to watch it. And there's some people that can watch everything. Um, exactly. So for me, I, I've chosen the four DC shows. I only watch Gotham when a couple episodes air and I have a free weekend and I just binge watch on Hulu and then I'll be caught up. But I'm not constantly watching. And Black Lightning, I'm not really interested in. Yeah, like, and I mean, I mean, I should be interested in Bray because it's a black superhero. But for some reason, I don't, I, mean, I don't know anything about Black Lightning. I rather prefer Static Shock show. And even then, I think Static Shock would do better on like a Teen Titans. Yeah, and then now we have Young Justice season three coming. Which I think is, is they just because you can do a show about a character doesn't mean you should. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's just you shouldn't like they're moving Legends to right after the Flash airs. So if I was reacting to Legends, I probably would have stopped anyways. So there's no way for me to. Yeah, I'm my schedule is gonna be really fucked up because of that. Because I mean, so, I'm gonna be telling people like. When Rod is about to come up, like Legends will not be reacted on Tuesdays because I have to do the Flash. So yeah, yeah. Legends. I don't know why they did that? That was a little strange. Well, because they're doing it for ratings and the fact that yeah. they're having that Riverdale show or something airing in that time slot. Oh yeah. So, but I think the main reason why they moved it, besides the fact they have a new show, they want to start airing there, is the fact that the Flash is their most high-rated show they've had in a long time, and. For them, if they have Legends airing right after Flash, people are just going to stick around and watch. But, I mean, it makes sense, yeah. But people are going to be so lost if they haven't watched anything of it yet. Exactly. So it's going to be a problem. I just don't think Legends is a show anybody can just jump into. And the fact that I think if you want to be real technical, I think that they, I think that they made a wrong move making a Legends of Tomorrow show. If you really want to get real... I agree, too. I think they just had these actors available, and they're like... We don't know what to do with them. They don't really fit into our, these stories anymore. Let's just put them all on a show. Which I don't really, Yay. I never really liked, yeah. really. I mean, Ray Palmer was fine on Arrow. It's, the tone was a lot different. I think he would have fit in more with the Flash kind of show. And originally, but, they, originally they were pitching to Brandon Routh, like before they started going the, the, the team route, they were pitching him an Adam show. And oh, yeah. if they would have did that, fine. But I don't know how it would be. But probably I wouldn't last long. Probably, so probably I'm just not a fan of the whole time travel thing. I mean, you have the Flash and then you have Legends, and yeah. their time their time rules are a lot different. So I don't really see they kind of clash. They kind of contradict each other. I think the reason why they did this show mainly is because number one, it's a completely different concept than the other shows. It's a team show, time travel, a lot of different things besides Arrow, Flash, and even Supergirl on a different network. But I think they didn't want to. They didn't want to lose these actors because they're under contract, and so they have a certain schedule. If they made it to where, okay, well, we're going to write off Sarah, we're going to write off the Adam, we're going to write off these other characters off of these other shows because we want to do other stories. We'll bring you back when we want, but if they can't bring those actors back due to them being on a movie set or doing another show, they lost them and they can't use them when they want to. So, that makes sense. I understand it, and I'm. And I watched the show. I still enjoy the show. There are just many issues I still have with the idea of it and what they're doing with it, but that's just me. 
Yeah, like, I mean, whenever I watch Supergirl or Legends, I mean, I enjoy them. It's not like I don't enjoy them. I just feel like it's more of a chore to watch them because I kind of feel obligated because it's in the universe with the other two shows. So, like, I feel obligated to watch them. But, like, I was trying to react to them all for a while, but it just – it felt more like a chore more than anything. Now, I may, like, start watching them on my own time. Maybe I'll enjoy them a little bit more. Yeah. That way, but – We'll see. I don't know. Something about Legends. I'm more open to Supergirl than I am Legends. I don't know. That's understandable because at least it's Supergirl. You're following a linear story and not following multiple stories in different time periods. And Exactly. You're getting confused and all that. And dealing with time travel. So I guess we'll have to – the show's come back on the uh, – ne- not next week, but the week after, right? Yes. So I guess we. that's when we find out. Uh, you're reacting to everything, right? Yeah, I react to everything. I think uh, I'm going to have to push Legends till Thursday. Like, if it would have aired Thursday, I'll put it on Thursday. But, yeah, I'll be I'll be back to reacting to them. But um, I'm most excited for Arrow to come back. Yeah, I'm most excited for Arrow. Flash, I still love Flash. I don't have any, like, I don't dislike it. I kind of feel like it's in a slump. Not where it's bad, but it's just not as interesting as it used to be, which is kind of hard to explain. There's something about Season 3 that I'm just not feeling... I don't like I, I like I like the show, but I could miss an episode and be okay. Like I wouldn't be like you know aching to see it. Now if I miss Arrow, I'm going to be wanting to watch it right away. Flash, I could miss it and like catch up like a couple of days later. Not, yeah, I feel, I feel like I have to keep up with all these shows because I know yeah. how people are on Twitter and on Facebook, especially because I'm an, I'm a part of uh, all four the shows like their Facebook big groups that they've built. Oh yeah, um, I'm in those groups too. I'm yeah. in them, but I am followed them for the hiatus because. Like there'd be a lot of posts that oh, yeah. there's a, there's a, yeah, it, it gets ridiculous. Like there are times where if like, like there's like a screenshot from another arrow promo of showing black siren or something. And the same picture got posted like 12 times in a day. I'm like, come on. Exactly. And then there's a lot of um, people that may be foreign, which isn't a problem, but like I, most of the, like I'll be scrolling through Facebook and I just will not be able to understand a lot of posts just by, yeah, it's, English, which isn't, I mean, yeah, you know, English, it, it's okay to have different English, but like I, I'll scroll through Facebook and I'll just see a bunch of the same posts or a bunch of people fighting over Elicity or like, so, I mean, I'm in them and I'll probably look at them when the shows come back, but I had to unfollow them because it was just getting, you know, a little too much for me. Yeah, but, I, I mean, mean, they're nice groups though. It's just for me, it's just that I, I just want these shows to be good. Like I want to stay consistently good, because arrows like so far with Arrow season four, the first nine episodes before the mid season break, it was fine. Sure, had some eh moments, um, but season five has been a lot better. But at any point, these shows could just jump the shark and just go downhill. I agree. Um, I don't, I'm just I don't know. I'm just I'm just worried, but I'm I'm excited for the shows to come back and. I don't know. I guess the the thing I'm most excited to see is who Prometheus is. Like just because they've given us a name, but I doubt it's who it is. Yeah, I, I, I'm not only do I doubt. I hope it's not that person. I hope it's not Justin Clay Warren at all. Yeah, it, it, I, I just don't think it's that. No, it's a it's a ruse. Because at first, like, oh, it's actually Justin Claiborne, this older dude. Like, no, it's not an older dude. <laughs> <laughs> Doing flips like that, no. No, and, and and then there was the reference. I don't know if you caught it, where Oliver said, "There's a a woman in Russia taught me that it's Talia Um I yeah, I for I for I thought that for the longest that Prometheus was a female. There's something about the build of it could just be who was ever in the costume. I mean, obviously it's a stunt person, but they just they're kind of stand like it could be a female. Yeah, I, I guess we have to wait and see. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for the show's return, and I don't know. I I guess what because I mean I I guarantee you when the reveal happens, people are going to be really pissed and really happy. I think it's going to be one or the other. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree for sure. So there you have it, guys. That is the podcast. I want to thank my guest, Mr. Mark Wayne, for thank you for having me. This great conversation, like we actually got, like we went off track a lot. I'm sorry, people, but <laughs> this is what happens. We've never really talked like in depth uh, about these shows, so oh, yeah. this was definitely fun. We need to do this again soon when these oh, shows. It was a lot of fun. All right, let me know. yeah, sure. All right, thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.